Emmanuel, Matthew 1.23 Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus Christ to empowers his followers to change the world today. Distance is not a barrier to God's move. Emmanuel TV, God with us. Faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest. We have prayed and hoped. But the thing that is yet to be applied is love. In the first Corinthians 13, 13, there are only three things on this earth that will last. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. Since the greatest is love, we need to make the greatest sacrifice. Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? Peter answered, You know that I love you. Three times, Jesus responded by giving Peter a responsibility keep my lambs. Shepherd my sheep and keep my sheep. Before we can be responsible to Jesus, it must be because of our love for Him. If you help your fellow brother, then you help Jesus. If you do your fellow brother, then you do Jesus. If you care for your fellow brother, then you care for Jesus. If you ignore your fellow brother, then you ignore Jesus. Jesus asks Peter, one of the most significant and penetrating in fact one of the most dangerous question ever asked do you love me jesus asked peter three times do you love me he asked him this question Three times before giving him the commission to shepherd his sheep. Whether you are educated or not, whether you are a farmer or a professor there is hope the hope in loving jesus in other words loving others jesus repeated the question so that the concept to be crystal clear do you love me? Faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest. Then their situation prepare them 
for extraordinary service. Tell your neighbor, Christian, their suitation, prepare them for extraordinary service. That is, the more that suitation, the more you draw close to God. The more that pain, the more you draw closer, you fast, you pray. The more that trouble, the more your attention for God. For our faith to be consistent, it must be based on something more stable than feelings. You need no more than open the eyes of your faith. You cannot see enough until the eyes of your faith are opened. When we are in the dark, we are likely to be frightening. This is why Christian today, without a fighting within our fears. Before you can become a Christian, you must be adopted by the Holy Ghost. Overcome your doubt. If you are genuinely seeking salvation from God in the midst of doubt God will not mind because at the end your doubt will move you closer to him in cases of prolonged uncomfortable situation such as sickness disease hardship, poverty, and life. One seems to be tempted to doubt his ability and desire to help. What one has not experienced before in one's life, dropping up will generate anxiety, worry, panic, doubt in one's faith. Overcome your doubt. Doubt can become sin if it leads you away from God. So skepticism, cynicism, and then to hard-heartedness. As you move closer to God, you will find the strength to trust God. And your faith will grow even stronger. That comes when we fail to stop long enough to observe all the evidence God gives everyone plenty of evidence to believe in him when you take your time to reveal God's track record in your life that will grow confident that he will work in your present situation as you recall God's track record in your life, you will grow confident that a solution is forthcoming. You will grow confident that your present situation will be overcome by God. Overcome your doubt.
faith is the transformative power of the universe the power of change a change from sickness to health a change from yoke to deliverance a change from weakness to strength a faithless generation to a faithful generation a change from poverty to blessing with Jesus in your life you will be in a future state as if it were already true or here when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior Jesus will become your coach and when Jesus become your coach you will be asked to see what is not yet seen you will be asked to do what is not yet done and you will be asked to say what is not yet said until you experience Jesus there will be dissatisfaction in your life tell your neighbor until you experience Jesus there will be dissatisfaction in your life when you have exhausted your mental and emotional resources you can no longer rely on yourself you simply need to trust something someone stronger wiser and smarter than yourself Jesus who can raise the dead is our choice that is why we are here today he delivered me and he can deliver you he rescued me and he will rescue you he will in the future stay where you are tell your neighbor tell your neighbor stay where you are hold steadily and trust don't listen to the temptation to act out of character or react badly to the emotional ways that you are experiencing. Reliance on God. Many people in the Bible whom we regard as a pillar of faith had some doubts as well not that they had less faith but their faith was challenged in a new way god does not mind doubt as long as we are seeking answer from him in the midst of doubt allow your doubt to move you closer to God not further away from God be patient and let God answer your question on his schedule not yours we can serve God not in the old way but in the new way of living in the spirit 
If you are wrestling without, attend a level church and stay close to other level Christians. Resist the temptation to isolate yourself because doubt feeds on loneliness. Never doubt your salvation. Satan can never snatch you away from God. He will try, he will not succeed. Reliance on God. Faith is a spiritual force. First of all, we have to understand that faith is a spiritual force. In other words, faith is a spiritual issue. It is not a natural issue. Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. It is not the amount of prayer you pray, but the faith you put into prayer that counts. Faith is of man's recreated spirit. Prayer is not right if it does not spring from faith on the way makes Jesus Christ truly lead to the believer. When we are dealing with faith in God, faith from God, faith of God, we must realize that God is spirit in that John 4 verse 24. Therefore, faith in Him is a spiritual issue to be discerned and operated spiritually. Prayer is an expression of believing because I believe I say amen. It is the way dwelling in us which is equivalent to Christ himself being us that is me Christ and the world are one faith is a spiritual force When David was brought to the king to defend his cause, he simply testified of how God had delivered him, saved him, rescued him from the mouth of lion and bear in his tender age. Today, when we come out for testimony, it is nothing but the immediate goodness of God. Remember the sickness you had in the past. The same sickness others had and died. Why many others are still on the sick bed? Life is in stages. In the college of God, however brilliant you may be, you will not be given double promotion. You will take every course 
in the University of God, however brilliant you may be, you will not be given double promotion. You will take every course because each course serves a purpose. People of God, God has a time for everything. A time to be born. A time to grow. A time to face persecution. A time to overcome. And a time to show the proceeds of victory. No matter how good you are, no matter how clever you are, there is always another level to reach for. clearly do you really see your life when you look at your life what do you see what does Jesus see do you see your life the way Jesus sees it where's from the Holy Ghost don't take the credit all we are doing is giving back what we have been given from his generous hand. Everything we, we have is actually only being borrowed from him. The object of our faith is God. Jesus said, have faith in God. Unlike an unfortunate amount of teaching today that seems to encourage believers to have faith in faith. Because he is good I can bring my request to him share my concern with him and cast my care upon him realizing that he is God and I'm not that he is a father and I'm but a child he is a shepherd and I'm a strange sheep we often hear that prayer changes things but it is not entirely true. Take note of that. It is not what? It is not entirely true. Prayer changes us. Faith changes things. Prayer changes our focus. And faith causes things to happen. Today we pray, but lack necessary faith to release the belief in our heart. There is power in our mouth. The belief 
in our heart is released by faith out of our mouth. Faith requires us to speak the word before we feel or see the result. Power of change. The battle between the stone and the water. In time, the water wins. We all fight common battles. Camouflage differently. I mean, Satan is our common enemy. The author of different affliction. Faith is the transformative power. Let's have a say transformative power. That is, faith is the transformative power of the universe, the power of change from what you are now to what you want to become. From a faithless generation to a faithful generation. Faith looks back. Let's someone say, faith looks back. I can't hear you. Faith tells me Jesus came. Jesus came because relationship was broken. His mission and vision was to restore the relationship that was broken. He came to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man. Faith allows me to embrace what Jesus did for me on the cross. Faith reminds me that my sins are forgiven. Therefore, I don't have to worry about or being haunted by my past. Nothing makes us love a person so much as praying for him. The more I pray for you, the more I love you. The less I pray for you, the less I love you. How strange, yet wholly true. The weight filled with power of God. The Father's work shall do. Christians can make bad mistakes. However, because of their relationship with God, they know that they can immediately go to God over their behaviors and God will help them get them back on their feet forgive them and help them not to make mistake again tell your neighbor what we see as a disadvantage can be turned into advantage this was true of the apostle paul 
a thorn in his flesh became an opportunity for God's strength to be seen in his weakness. If we receive a blessing, why should we not expect some pain which will serve as a check to make the blessing the more valuable? If we do not worship God, who is a spirit? In the spirit, we miss the end of worship. We must depend upon God's spirit for strength and assistance. Laying our soul under his influence and oppression. God is in all ages gathering into himself a generation of spiritual worshippers. The name Jesus has power. Indeed, but only among those who are committed to the glory of God. If we resist the devil by a true and lively faith, Satan will flee from us. But if we think to resist him by chanting name Jesus as a spare or charm, Satan will prevail. Your values must be tested against facts and experiences when we fearlessly act upon the words of God and joyously cast our every care on him victory is as sure as the rising of the sun when you know that the word is God speaking to you now, it is not difficult to act upon it. Encouraging Words by TB Joshua Daniel 3, 16 What are we saying here? We people of God we do not defend ourselves because we have a defender. The lives of believers in both Old Testament and New Testament testify that being faithful to God does not eliminate adversity. We should recognize that it may be a sign of being faithful to God. When our faith is tested, our endurance has a chance to grow. Adversity can also build you up and strengthen your faith. The year of combat. 
What does this mean? Mean dream again. That is draw greater plan. Encouraging words by TB Joshua. Who is a prophet? The belief of people is that the prophet is only out to predict or foretell the future. There are two classes of prophets. We have a prophet and we have general practitioner one. The first class of prophets are those who have the ability to communicate the saving will of God to others. They may be called general practitioners or general prophets. They are true preacher, true teacher. Take note of that because of their deep knowledge of the scripture. They teach and preach about things both announced and known. The other prophets are those who receive direct and specific message from God. We are not used to this prophet. That is why most time the prophet is doubted and criticized. The unbelief is high because of worldly was detraction. Because of what? Worldly detraction. Signals. You need the spirit of a prophet to recognize, to understand, or to know a prophet. Who is a prophet? It is very easy in this world of detractions to get off track and lose focus. If you love yourself as much as you should, you will learn that if you feel pain, you are living outside the truth, where your light is coming from. Tell your neighbor, keep your focus. Identify your source. Regardless of which 
translation we prefer faith this with things we cannot see faith in the actual sense takes us behind look here the visible to the invisible this is visible where you are now faith takes us behind the visible here to the invisible the person say we walk by faith not by sight this means if you walk by faith you do not need sight if we walk by faith we do not need what we do not need sight and if we walk by sight we do not need what we do not need faith faith is related so and exclusively to two realities to god and to god's will the thing that keeps us from despairing is not what we see but what we believe faith enable us to see the unseen and thus enable us to endure when visible war offer us no hope no encouragement without faith you will continue to commit the word of god into memory you will read bible you will know bible from genesis to revelation but all will be committed to where we call it brain power call it brain power say brain power brain power there is supernatural power of god and there is natural one brain power the one you study in the school when you read without the help of holy spirit we commit this to memory but by faith not only commit to memory but let the word become an integral part of your being because it lives in you flesh should have been translated to senses flesh should have been what so that you understand it well flesh should have been translated to senses the sins of the flesh are the sins of the senses worry about tomorrow Jesus begins by saying let not your heart be troubled the law is not saying here that we lack reason to be troubled what he is really saying is that there is greater reason not to be we can all acknowledge that life is filled with trouble this is why the book of Job 5 verse 7 says man is born to trouble from the moment you leave your mother's womb you encounter trouble life begins with a doctor slap on our backside 
we all face almost daily disappointment. We want to be strong, but we find ourselves weak. We want to be courageous, but we feel overcome by fear. We want to be successful, but we fail repeatedly. We want to be loved, but people seem indifferent to us. The better a man is, the worse he is thought of by his rivals. Everything good in you is the cause of envy and the effect and resource. The consequence of envy is everything bad. The cause of killing, stealing, and destruction is the urge to store up wealth here on earth. Worry about tomorrow. Worrying about future destroys our sense of judgment. When you worry about tomorrow, about future, you cripple your ability to think, your ability to act and exercise faith in the present. When we are anxious about tomorrow, you will not be able to differentiate between God's supplies and Satan's faith. Call it bait. B-A-I-T Today's trouble is enough for today. God is aware of our challenges and He prepares us for each day's challenges. If you are a follower of Him, a believer, you will use today's supplies and let tomorrow be. Use today's supply and let next be. No matter the message, no matter what is happening around you, don't be agitated and stressed out and thrown into confusion. Worry about tomorrow. It is never proper to base faith on our improvement after prayer. There is no reason for faith as good as God's word. Our looking onto God's promise is a good reason for looking to God for mercy. Then there is no time to stop looking until God withdraws His words. Tell your neighbor, our looking, our looking. Unto God's promises is a good reason for looking to God for mercy. Then there is no time to stop looking until God withdraws His way. It honors God to believe Him even when every sense contradicts Him. And He promised to honor those who honor Him. Tell your neighbor, it honors God 
to believe him. Even why every sense contradicts him. He promised to honor those who honor him. Hold fast to your confidence in God's will. When your faith is tested, what is your confidence? What is my confidence? Jesus is my healer, whether he heal me or not. That is my confidence. My confidence, Jesus is my savior, whether he saved me or not. Jesus is my redeemer, whether he redeemed me or not. This is my confidence. Like I have said, outward affliction wants and burden are the great arguments Satan uses to make proof of God question their sonship. This is his greatest interest is to overthrow you, to overthrow your relation to God as a father. So this is why your situation, your condition should not mislead you. When you believe is where you possess the thing that is where has guaranteed. When you believe is where you pray and you know it is his way. When you pray in that name, Jesus takes Provides. Then it is in his care. Your word, then in Jesus' name, makes things come into being. I mean, come to pass. It is no longer your body as long as you do not repudiate it by a wrong profession. My heart knows that the case is settled. No matter the signs, no matter the situation and experiences, my heart knows that the case is settled. You ask for healing, so you get out of bed and walk. You ask for money, so you make provision to pay the bill. You ask for rain, so you put on your raincoat. You are ready when the rain comes. Prayer should be followed by an attitude of absolute trust in Christ that He is working out the answer. Your prayer is based upon his word my prayer is based upon his word scriptural prayer releases the power of god tell your number feel your prayer with the scripture because scriptural prayer releases the power of god prayer and reading the Bible should always go together. One is not complete without the other. The heart must be rooted and granted in the Word so that what God says 
is final with you. We pray according to his way. We are assured that he heard us. And if he hears us, that is as good as an answer. Your Love for Christ by T.B. Joshua Mama love is but a shadow of God's love. Do you love me more than this? Nothing can compare with the power of this word spoken from the heart. Love can make a king abdicate his throne that is resigned. Love can make poor boy, poor man, beggar become a prince. If spoken from the heart, God is love. He is without fear. That is love. Without equal, equivalent, equivalent, there's nothing to compare. Richer than any minerals. Love. Warmer than any sun. That's love for you. God loves the orphans. The strangers, the widows, the needy, just name them. Therefore, man, if he loves God truly, is under obligation to love his fellow man. Love cannot exist without relationship. It can be manifested only where there is an object to be loved. You can deny God. You can ignore God. You can ridicule Him. But His law remains constant and unchanging. Through His love, we love. By His love, we are a new man. In his love, we have newness of life. God's love centers in his will. And what is his will now? Let's define it. It is his will to give. It is our will to give back. And also to receive the gifts freely given knowing God's love will enable you to press on to tomorrow tell your neighbor will enable you to press on to tomorrow nothing is stronger than love greater than all because God is love and God is greater than all. Your love for Christ by TB Joshua. If you would like to visit the Synagogue Church of All Nations, log on to our website www.scoan.org. Go to the Visit Us page. And for those from within Nigeria, you can call the three visit lines that appear on the website. For those from outside Nigeria, there are some frequently asked questions that will assist you in your visit procedure. Remember, it is essential that anyone from outside Nigeria should fill in the questionnaire. Please remember to answer every question that is asked. And after you have filled in the questionnaire, remember to click Send. 
Please note, you must wait to receive an invitation or confirmation of your visit from us before making any traveling arrangements or flight bookings. All communication with the Synagogue Church of All Nations should be through the following email address. Info at scoan.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Emmanuel, God with us.